Listen to the pile up here at the end of my contact with Tango India 5 stroke November 3 Kilo Sierra this weekend during the North American CUSO party. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf, 5 and 9. 5 9 Tampa, Florida. Thanks, Bob. Sure is that. Today's video is sponsored by G Gable Radio. Follow their link in the description below and you'll find some of my favorite amateur radio portable antennas and gear. The XYL said to me a couple of months ago, hey, why don't you try one of those guttery antennas? <laughs> my first thought was, you know what a guttery antenna is? All of my years of rambling on and on about stealth antennas and the Homeowners Association, you were listening? My second thought was, that'll never work. My third thought, of course, was, I didn't just say that out loud, did I? Well, gutter antennas, antennas hiding in plain sight, stealth in the HOA, I'm all about that. I'm not afraid to try something new and different. But I'm also thinking, you know, I have a couple of fingers left over on this hand for the number of times I could count and say to her, I told you so. So I thought maybe I can get the first one here in this case and show her this isn't going to work. For context, those of you who watch the channel regularly know what these two items are on the back of my home. The polymer box that takes a 30 foot sloper up to my portamast flagpole. And then the box on the right, that's the Chameleon Antenna URT1 remote tuner. I have taken that portable for testing. I have tested it multiple times in the backyard. And look at that, like a foot and a half to the left of that URT1 is my downspout. That's an aluminum downspout. It's just begging to be tested. I didn't think of this when I installed the URT1, but it's in a perfect location just to take a two foot piece of wire Take it on over to that downspout, hook it up and see if I can make contacts. I've chosen the URT1 because it's a remote tuner. I can load this thing up. I can get my match right at the quote antenna, i.e. downspout and gutters, and therefore my signal back to the shack. I, I don't have loss other than what my cable is providing. I get the match right here at the magical antenna. Now, Gutter antennas, they're common in manuals and uh, people making recommendations of how to operate stealth in an HOA. So I don't have anything against this. As a matter of fact, I think it's a fantastic idea. So what was my hang up? Why did I think that I wasn't going to be able to make this work? Well, let's get a closer look at my setup here and maybe you'll understand my skepticism. I had hope, but I really didn't think it was going to work. And oh, by the way, that pile up I broke through with Tango India 5, November 3 Kilo Sierra, that's my gutter antenna. So it does work. And I'll show you a few more QSOs along the way, as well as the band conditions while this event was going on. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Uh, Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. I'm in my name is Tino, Tango India, November Oscar. The name is Bob, Tampa, Florida. Thank you, Bob. Turn 3 Florida, Hotel India, 3 Kilo, Hotel India, 3 Kilo. You're looking away from my house to my 20 foot portamast that's sunk in the ground. I can pop this out of the ground in a moment's notice and take it portable. It flies the American flag. So here in the HOA, I have a flagpole that doubles as a mast because here is my eh, 30 to 33 foot wire. I don't remember exactly how long it is. This was not up during the event. I had it down while I was working my uh, gutter antenna. So here is the gutter. Here's my URT1. So let's talk about this fancy schmancy antenna that I have right here that's part of my home construction. So this gutter is only really about I'm going to say that's 15 to 20 feet long. Why was I concerned about this working? Well, the reason I was concerned about this working is because my home was built probably 40 years ago. When my wife and I bought it, we gutted it down to the studs, completely rebuilt it ourselves. All we did to the outside was reshingle the roof, paint the house. So what I have here is gutter that's been on the home for I don't know how long, 40 years, my downspout, my soffit, it's been painted multiple times over. So I don't know how many coats of paint 
are on these products. They're all aluminum. This is aluminum downspout, aluminum gutter, aluminum fascia, aluminum soffit. So my concern was, is my signal going to get out with all of the layers of paint? And I've got aluminum on top of aluminum on top of aluminum, and that fascia wraps around the end of the house. Where does my antenna end? I know where it begins. It begins right here with my URT1. I have no clue where it ends, and therefore I have no idea what my radiation pattern is. I just didn't know what the signal was going to do, and that's why I said this would never work. If you decide to give this a try, make sure all of your downspout and gutter connections have a screw through them. Simply, I mean, make sure there's conductivity because if they aren't connected electrically, then your RF signal is going to stop where the conductivity ends and breaks. So make sure that they are all connected either with pop rivets or with screws and you want to remove some of the paint. I did that in each section going up to my 15 foot section of gutter. Remember, I don't really know how long my antenna is. I have that aluminum fascia and soffit all around the house. So I just, I'm not really sure how long my antenna is. I just know it operated really well on 20 meters. It did okay on 40 meters. We'll get to some whisper maps. I'll show you the band conditions during the time that I use this. You can go on over to Google and do a search for HF gutter antenna and you'll find these top three hits are very helpful. They explain what they did and how they did it, but this is very straightforward. I wouldn't spend an awful lot of time or don't get lost here on that last search result. Undoubtedly, there'll be some people there telling you, go ahead, experiment in the ham way of life because that's what amateur radio is all about. You'll equally find a couple of curmudgeons who say that'll never perform as good as my tower antenna or my dipole. And well, I think we all know that I'm operating in a compromised situation here in the HOA stealth. I don't expect to compete with your properly installed dipole. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm operating stealth. Quite frankly, I'm pretty impressed with the results. So what you're going to find is these three people that I first mentioned here. They just happen to be the top search results. They talk about using an unun or using an external tuner. An external tuner really acts like a coupler. It does the match right at the antenna. That wire going from my URT1 immediately begins my antenna. It creates the match, it loads it up, and it sends the signal back through my coax. And therefore I have the most efficient antenna I can possibly have with a remote tuner. You can use an unun here and then use a tuner in the shack. So essentially you need a tuner either way and a remote tuner is going to be more efficient for you. I will show this someday using an unun because I just want to see how that works and then I'll use my internal tuner for that as well. I choose the URT1 because, well, it's a tuner that can tune with any transceiver. If your transceiver can send a constant carrier downrange, this tuner will work with it without any special control cable. As a matter of fact, there is no control cable. The internal box that controls the tune cycle basically travels the signal, sends the signal down the coax shield, and that way you don't have to run any special cables. And that's why I say it'll work with any transceiver. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4 Bravo Mike Golf. Uh, this is Keith in Illinois. Bob in Florida. Bob in Florida. Thanks, Bob. Uh, QRZ Alpha Charlie 9 Sugar. I went into the shack sometime after 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, turned on the radio, started spinning the dial. But of course, I wanted to see what the band conditions were. Poor, poor, fair, poor. What a night to test a new antenna and a compromised antenna at that. Well, everything above 20 was trash and 40 was just average. No one was really operating the contest on 40 that I could hear. I did pick up two POTA activators and they were actually mediocre contacts at that. On 20 meters, well, that's where we did the most damage. It was 10 contacts after spinning from end to end on the band twice. So I just started at the bottom end of my band privileges, went to the top, made as many contacts as I could, and then went back and did the same thing all over again. And again, for these band conditions with my compromised antenna, I'm pretty happy with that. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. Kilo Delta 4, Bravo, Mike Golf. 
Bob, Florida, Foxtrot Lima. I've been using Whisper to do testing on antenna systems, especially when it's the exact same antenna with one variable. Does that variable improve or not improve the performance of a particular antenna? Whisper does not guarantee the ability to make a single sideband voice contact. The conditions need to be much better for an SSB phone contact versus a very low power, weak signal propagation report type contact. So it's kind of an indicator uh, metric, and so I treat it that way. Nonetheless, it does tell us a story that my gutter antenna is actually getting out. So the number of contacts made, that's in the first chart in the blue bar graph. And you can see that I made the most contacts on 20 meters, 1,436. I let my whisper transmitters run, I believe for about 12 hours through the night once I was done trying to make voice contacts. So this is the number of contacts made, and I might've made multiple contacts with the same station. As a matter of fact, that's exactly what did happen. Because if you go to the chart next to it and look at the unique stations per band, this is how many stations heard me. So 152 stations reported hearing me on 20 meters. And then you can see the other bands, which people were hearing me, I should say, whisper transmitters, whisper receivers were hearing me and reporting back to me what they were hearing. They report back an SNR, a signal to noise ratio. So up here in the top row, I listed the SNR. A higher SNR signal to noise ratio is better than a low SNR. So at 34 or negative 34, I believe that's close to as weak as a signal as can be picked up with the whisper capability. So the more I'm on the front end of this, the better off from the strength of a signal. And here I just went and I grabbed 80% of my contacts, 80% of 3953 contacts. And they happened in the negative 14 to negative 29 SNR. I guess I could do the same thing and get to 80% and starting here with one contact, two contacts, three. Let's see when I get up close to uh, about 3,100 contacts. I'm at 1,700, 2,023, 26. Right here I hit 3,266. So depending on what kind of statistician you are, you may have preferred to start in column B than where I did. I just started where I had 100 reports plus telling me that they heard me. A number of different ways to look at this. This is how I looked at it because I just wanted to get an idea of how well I was being heard on Whisper. Are there antennas out there, whether they're homebrew or commercially available, better performing antennas than this? <laughs> well, of course there are. Are there any antennas out there that hide as well as this in the HOA? I can't think of a single one. And if you're hung up by my URT one standing out there on the back wall, a simple flower pot will take care of that and disguise it. So this is a pretty awesome antenna. And I'm glad I finally tried it. Nonetheless, the words I told you so were spoken, just not by me. Who expected that to happen anyway? I hope you enjoyed this, friend. I hope this challenges you to go try unique things because you just never know. And for those of you who want to say, yeah, solar maximum, of course you can do this. I've been making contacts with compromised antennas from the worst of the last solar minimum, and I'll continue to do so when the next solar minimum comes around because I'm honing my skill all along the way. I'll talk to you soon, friend. 73.